Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 19 for a spaceship game that I'm making with my buddy Rich and members of the community. Today, I want to talk about a whole bunch of cool new features in the game, but I want to start out the video with the process of turning a professional piece of concept art into an in-game asset. This is something that I've known I wanted to do since the beginning of the project, and I finally took the plunge and found a concept artist that I really liked. This is Island, and I just found his portfolio online because I like to look at spaceship concept artists and sci-fi concept artists and game concept artists. And I had him bookmarked for quite a while. I reached out and we started working together on some concepts. The first concept I tossed his way was for a nav beacon. In our game lore, a nav beacon is like a small space station that emits a gravitational signature that other ships around the solar system can detect and then jump to. In game terms, it'll be like a fast travel point, but it's got to have logic and a design that makes sense within the universe. Now, when testing the concept out in game in terms of just trying to get a scale and feel for it, I made this pretty crummy looking model in Blender. And then I sent this model over to Island. We discussed the game's lore and ideas behind it a bit. And then he generated a bunch of really cool concepts for me. He did it really fast. He's a very good artist and I was super impressed with his work. We narrowed it down to a few potentials and then started workshopping the final image just a little bit to fit some ideas that I had just from looking at his concept art. It sort of made sense to me that we should maybe have a giant spherical structure towards the center that would be the device that generates this gravitational pulse or signal. And then I took this concept art, threw it into Blender, and the first iteration of it I showed off in last week's devlog, and this is a very, very preliminary white box model. If you look at it closely, you can see it's, it's literally just primitive shapes. It was basically just enough geometry to sort of get a sense for the shape and scale in game and see how that felt. And once I was happy with the feeling of it in game, I dug into building out the high res model. This would be going in with all the details in Blender and we're trying to take advantage of Unreal Engine 5's Nanite workflow, which means rather than trying to optimize everything as we model it and go low poly, more or less throwing a bunch more high poly models into Unreal and letting Nanite deal with it. Now I started learning Blender last year and I would say I'm sort of an intermediate skill level with it. Uh, some people model incredibly fast. This model probably took me a few days to get ready and then bring it into Substance Painter after that and start doing the texturing and the material for that. That went pretty quick, although I didn't go quite as deep as I wanted to. And once I was relatively happy with the look of it in Substance Painter, I spit out the different materials. This is using a base color, normal map, ambient occlusion, um, metallic and roughness, and then I can kind of tweak those further in Unreal if uh, I want things to be more shiny or more matte. Now there are a few extra steps based on our game logic. I put in some sockets, which are basically just 3D placeholders for where airlocks need to go. So we can actually dock to the station once it's in game. And then actually thanks to someone in Discord who was saying we need some cool particle effects and stuff around our station, I thought, well, I think I can make a gravity wave for this. So I looked up a YouTube tutorial on how to make a little gravity wave pulse effect. Pretty simple. You just make a, a ring alpha map in Photoshop, make a new material and use that as the refraction channel for it. Then you can either make it visible or invisible with a invisible refraction wave. Then you use that material, throw it into a particle emitter, and you just create a very simple singular particle that spawns and then scales up in size until it disappears and just put that on repeat. And now you've got a cool gravity wave effect in game. In addition to that, the blue glow at the top of the gravity generator felt a bit too static for me. I like the idea of something maybe spinning inside of it to create this unique gravity signature. So uh, I looked up how to make a material that would spin around. I created sort of a, a fan-like alpha map again, which would control the emissive intensity. And then I just created a spinning effect for it, but then I had to scale it, of course, and scaling a UV in a material requires a little bit more math behind it. So I looked up a tutorial on how to make that complex thing, but then we got a spinning material. And then I also added in a little bit of a light flickering effect that is above the material to sort of fake some emissive lighting from that spin. And it feels a lot more alive now. Someone in Discord said we need some blinking lights as well, as I was showing this off. And I agree, we're going to have to get some 
blinking lights. There's definitely more steps involved with this, but at the moment I'm pretty happy what I was able to accomplish in uh, less than a week. Now Panzer V1 is also working on some sound effects for this, which I'm really excited about. A cool pulsing sound for the grav wave, and also just some general buzz busyness sounds to the space station. It'll be really fun exploring those sound ideas in game. Now you might have also noticed that the UI has been looking a little bit different. We've got a new proximity ring included in our nav ring now, which is going to help massively with navigation. Rich spearheaded the building of this whole thing, and I'm going to let him talk about it. The nav ring is going to be key for gathering data that's off screen. In order to pilot your ship fast, you'll want to know if there's something off screen that you're going to hit. So we've added this proximity ring. So you'll have the information you need to know to not hit something if you're flying fast. The way we get that data is by using what's called a line trace. Here I've made the radar bigger so you can get a really good view of what's happening. Every red line is a line trace. We basically tell the engine, draw a line from this point to another point. And if something gets in the way, then stop the line at that point and tell me that distance. Then we can use that distance data to draw these little hash marks. The longer and brighter the hash mark is, the closer you are to it. And the short and dim hash marks are things that are far away. These line traces will also hit things like bases and ships. So you'll be able to detect those on your proximity ring as well. We'll use different colors for different things. For example, if you see a few red hash marks, that means you're detecting something hostile that's within the range of this proximity system. We'll probably have a larger range for the proximity system than your radar. So you'll be able to see that there's something out there, but you won't be able to tell what it is until you get closer with your radar. One thing I'm really happy with is that these hash marks will fade out so they don't obscure something they're representing when it's on screen. So it reduces clutter a bit, and I think it's a pretty cool effect. We got this working pretty easily by using what's called a curve. This curve represents the brightness of a hash mark based on where the object is in the sensor's range. We have the sensor's maximum range to right next to the ship. If an object is at zero or past zero, it doesn't show up on the sensors, so there's no hash mark. As we start getting closer and closer to the ship, the brightness ramps up up to here to 10, so now you can really see the hash mark. But if you get any closer than this, it ramps down really quickly. This is where the hash marks are fading out so that you can see the object. And then as you move away from the object, it goes backwards, back up to bright, and then ramps this way. So we've been making a lot of progress on a lot of fronts. There's quite a few other things in the works right now from movement mechanics being overhauled, AI stuff that we have to basically jump into. Got a bunch more concept art for building out some asteroid space station stuff that I'm really excited to get into. If you want to follow along more closely and see some of our progress as we're uh, figuring out problems and troubleshooting every day, check out our Discord. It's linked in the video description below. And if you want to know more about the overall game concept, if you missed some of the past devlogs, check out this video right here. I discussed the whole premise of the game and what you're going to be able to do. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.